This is Football Daft with Stephen Purden. Midfield Dynamo and average actor. Chris Toll. Target man. Suspicious character. And... Welcome to Football Daft, eh? the daftest Scottish football podcast around. And I would say welcome the team, but I've, they've, they've dingied me this week and there's appears to be no one here. Stephen's stuck on in Shield Inch because of rain. Grado's upped his eyes and babies and Toe's just in a sea of depression. So, um... Ah, welcome. kidding on! Ah! Kidding on! <laughs> Phil no. G's all well. No, yeah, but cut. really, Boba's off again. Yes. Boba's off again. I know, that guy's not going to get a wage this month. And he's... <laughs> he's not going to get a wage. But he, he pulled me up last week. He pulled me up about last week's episode. Did he? What did he say? Wasn't he happy at all, man? Is that because we outed him for being no. off for making a bed? No, he, he was going, I can't, but he says, me and my pals were, were listened and what you said, that was shocking what you said. Uh, I feel sorry for you. I'm not going to give you it tight this week. I mean, come on. And all that I'm going, what? I go, here's the crack, right? Bob is good at doing that. See, Bob, but with Toll, he's good at noising him up and doing all that. I like what, sitting back and watching that. It's not that I didn't want to rub it into old Toll. Bob, that's Bob's game. Am I right, John? Am I fucking taking no, this no, away? Think, th- yeah, get, Stephen takes it on himself to, to, to rub toe, and you just sit back and get your popcorn I out normally. Smoke my vape and all that. No, no, I know. Me, and, me and my pal sat back and watched it, and you didn't <laughs> fucking say anything at all about the football. Uh, <laughs> well, well, I mean, go. fucking, can he, can, he, can he come on the show because it's fucking raining in Glasgow? Do you know what I, I mean? Know. What the fuck? I mean, last week, <laughs> last week, up, pub, get your ass on here, boy. I know. Last week it was I'm making a bed for my kids, and then this week, oh, it's raining in the shield inch. Fucking, he films River City. You would think they want to make it realistic in Scottish. Do you think fucking rain would be the first thing? Yeah, right, hey, hold on. Ca- this is my mate here. We're taking, it's called right. River City, not fucking Meadow City. He's gone. He's gone too far. I should have done oh, that. Now so, I feel bad. Sorry, you know I mean? Grado. Sorry, Grado. No, I don't know what I feel about. See, he's got Grant Stoughton over City, I know. Know what I mean? Rasheen's back and all. Rasheen's back, my man, to bust her. Oh, man. I mean... I tell you what, see if that pub isn't run by a pint-sized gangster within the next (laughs) six months. I'm going to be raging at Purden. So... Wouldn't he give you a sniff but you shite the boy? (laughs) Here, but by the way, this episode, let's be honest about this, it's a bit of a different episode anyway, isn't it? Because we've got Kevin Twaddle on the show. And you might be wondering, what Kevin Todd? Well, listen, man, what a story he's got. And it's a wee bit more serious today, isn't it, too? Because we've recorded what? an interview. Let's be right, we're going to We're going to be honest here. This, as, as though this comes across as a seamless phenomenon, this podcast, we film it like Pulp Fiction. Out of order. Oh, it's all hig- higgledy biggledy, some people would say. <laughs> right? Mm. And we've already done the Kevin Todd interview. And I'll tell you something. What a fucking eye opener. What an eye opener it is, and he's are in for a treat, an absolute treat. Absolutely. But first, before we get into the football chat for this week, we need to talk about the fact that Grado was on off the ball at the weekend there, mm. and um, was to, kept messaging me throughout the show saying, "Oh, they're doing this topic. Have you got any good answers for this <laughs> about wrestling moves and football and stuff?" And then he went on and he got Keir Starmer mixed up with Jason Leach. <laughs> no. <I> mean... <laughs> No, he ke- listen. Um, he came on right. You know he's he's on that every weekend, isn't he? Ah, oh, Jason Leach is on every. He's weekend, on every right? week. I thought you meant Keir Starmer. I was like, fuck, he's well, stuck on for votes. So Leach is on. <laughs> he's gone like that. Uh, the Tam and Stuart were giving it. Uh, oh, and we've got Grado in the studio, and uh, he goes, "Oh, Grado, great to finally, uh, great to finally talk to you." And I, I was going, "Oh, good to meet you, Keir." I fucking, I get him mixed up with that, Jason. Do you know? Can you see where I'm coming from with that, too? Mate, they, they were, they were going. Honest with you. I'm going to be 100 percent honest with you. I know what Jason Leach looks like, but if you put Keir Starmer in the lineup, I wouldn't be able to pick him up. Well, mate, I don't know. What you, it's been all over the telly for the last couple of weeks on this politics, Kieran. So, I, I, and he was, it was kind of awkward. I think, I think they kind of thought it was awkward because I don't think they're really allowed to touch on all politics and already. Was that right, John? Oh, they, they, they can't really. I mean, it, now that we're out of election, we can they can talk politics and all that again. But I mean, you can't give your views on a like political party 
mm. chat on air, you know, because it's against reg- real regulations. Luckily on podcasts, we can say whatever the fuck we want. So I'm still you... not going there, fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't certainly, go there. certainly not, sir. Certainly not. <laughs> Two things you never talk about, football and politics, and uh, we only talk about one thing on this show. Um, so what's been happening in Scottish football? Got to put a shout out to Motherwell boys. Um, oh. The, given the, the, the supporters that bought a season ticket, this, it went viral. This uh, this season, they're giving them a free season ticket next season. Alan Burrows, you spoke to him on the radio grade, though, didn't you? Oh, mate. Yeah, I mean, they're giving all 10 season ticket holders a free season oh, ticket. Oh, you get back in your boat. No, that was coming. Oh, yeah. oh, what off. But do you know what? See how, pardon me, right? He also does 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 more to that as well. It's not just a season ticket thing. He basically told us on the radio as well. He was giving it. Look, see if any supporter is struggling with money this year. You know, we'll we'll, we'll take money off season tickets. They're so involved with mental health and community work. That, see yeah. that guy, and do you know the best it is because is is it fan owned Motherwell? Yes. Yeah. He see for a, a chief executive, he's just like. One of us, do you know that way? Like the way he's kind of dead down to earth and he'll just tell you how it is. Mm. And it was a mega breath of fresh air because because I say to him, I goes, Look, because he was telling me all the things that they're doing for fans. And I'm like, Wow, what a difference for all that shite down south in the last couple of weeks with the Super League. And to hear something as refreshing as that coming from other women, you've got to applaud them. Definitely, without a doubt. It's, I, I know I obviously had a wee go at them, and it's a joke. Uh, it's We've had, a, we've had a few ex Motherwell players on the show, and Motherwell is definitely the definition of a family club. It's a great run. You no, know, so it's a, it's a it's a phenomenal gesture for the club, um, and you know a, a few other clubs could maybe take a a wee. Yeah, a, a, a pointer. They've got they've got. I mean, they've got a tremendous youth system. Obviously, David Turnbull uh, turning up at Celtic. Chris doing the job there. Yeah. Watching it looks like Alan Campbell. He's out of contract at the season. You know the the midfielder. Um, mm-hmm. He's out of contract at the season. They'll still get development on money, but do you think Rangers are? They've Celtic? lost. They've lost Declan Gallagher as well. They've lost Declan Gallagher. Uh, but do you think Rangers and Celtic would take a go on Alan Campbell? He's a I great think Celtic player. would. I think Celtic would. Yeah. Um, I think Rangers have have pretty much got their got their squad for next season unless they lose a couple after the Euros it would be silly I think for both clubs not to look at him because he's had a great season he's a good player he's had a great season see some, you know who was telling me this oh because oh Crofty Crofty's a Motherwell fan right this is on go radio uh, he was but... he was telling me apparently Motherwell if you look at when Alexander took over and if they had started the league for then Motherwell would be we would be second place. Is that right? Or am I talking? Is that right? I think that sounds like shite grade. I'll be yeah, honest with you. I don't know. Do you know, I don't know. I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm not going to take Crofty's word for that. No, I think he's talking shite grade. You know. um, was this after a few fucking champions in the hot tub? <laughs> <laughs> Please go, if you do get a chance, listen, check out the Go Radio Facebook page. Uh, you can see Grado getting ducked into a jacuzzi by Crofty um, and singing. Uh, what, what was by the way, that wasn't, that wasn't a mispronunciation. He did get ducked in the jacuzzi. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to advertise, go, mate. Bar and son. There we go. There we go. There we go. Uh, Stephen Gerrard voted manager of the year by Scottish football writers. Um, obviously, after getting the 55 grade, though, do you think, though, if Callum Davidson was to win the Scottish Cup, they'd have to take the award back off him? Hmm, no, I mean, it's like Callum Davidson. Does, I mean, it, you, you've got his cup games as how many games, right? Rangers have went the season so far, touch wood. It's a Wednesday night. We're, we're recording this when Rangers are playing Livingston. We're, we're undefeated in the league. How many, I mean, cup games, how many games is that overall? Early two. The two cups you're talking about. No, Ra- Rangers, Rangers only played what three? What do you mean? Four no, cup but... games, and they managed to get beat twice. No, but what I'm, what I'm saying <laughs> to you is, there's me. We we've won uh, 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 overall. Uh, 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 One fucking two. Well, but the cup games, what grade them? How can you? Aye, what you about cup games? You'd have to. Aye, but how did you know one of them? I'm not saying yeah. my my team's manager should be manager of the year, Graham. I'm, oh, I'm saying my team's <laughs> manager should be manager of the year, Chris. Aye, but, but what what I'm saying is, it's a bigger achievement. For St. Johnson to win two domestic cups and it is for Rangers to win the league there. No, it's it. not. I is. I is. I is. I is. I is. No, no, no. In, in terms of, no, I get what you mean. I get what you're saying. For, for, it's big news for a team outside the old firm to win two cups. However, what I'm saying, that's only judged on so many games. The league is judged over, what, 30 odd games? You can't yes, compare that. You can't compare Callum, that. Like Callum for, Davidson's done something that Stephen Gerrard can't. 
I'm, I'm, but he's not in the league. I bet Steam Gerrard hasn't won the cups. But I think, a... I think for St Johnson, bearing in mind, bearing in mind, right, St Johnson, I think. <laughs> He's raging. <laughs> See, I can't kind of keep up with you this now. I don't like that. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no mate. No, I'm I'm well, you strike it. Oh, fuck this. <laughs> He's walked off. <laughs> no, put it in perspective. I think putting it in any perspective, right? Um, St. Johnson have won one... St- I one said, Stephen, does it matter? Right Is Stephen Gerrard's a manager of the year. We won 55. We stopped the 10. Move on. Right. It's like Celtic. It's like I have to laugh at Celtic fans. It's like the start of the year. Oh, we're going to win ten in a row. Then it's oh Shane Duffy's going to rescue us. Then it's learning out. Then it's oh they're going to crumble. Then it's fucking. Oh, I know. Oh, I remember the Rangers fans at start. You're all one going last to dance. Crumble. Now the Celtic oh. fans. Now the other Celtic fans have got to grasp on us. Callum Davidson for manager of the year. Oh, we're going to dance. We're going to dance. Oh, eh, Rangers are going to do treble. Oh, wait a minute. Rangers are going to do double. Oh, well, you're only going to make a full of yourself there, sir. Right, well, well, I'll make a full I, of you, well, sir. I think as a neutral, I would say Callum Davidson, if he wins the Scottish Cup, should be manager of the year. Anyway, let's well, move on. Anyway, so it's fucking doesn't matter. Well, then Jai <laughs> Ross should get manager of the year. For God's <laughs> sake, right. Right. Kenny McQueen out of Scotland squad for the Euros. Who should go in his place, David Turnbull or Billy Gilmore? Now, there's a question for Oof. you. Uh, was Billy Gilmer, without a doubt, deserves to be a, going to the Euros. Was there not some sort of legislation brought in by UEFA where we're allowed to take extra players now? You are allowed to take extra players, so it's a 26 you can take now, off the top of my head. But if it came down to Billy Gilmore or David Turnbull, I know who you're going for, Grado. Billy's a pal of yours. Chris, the family. Chris, as a Celtic supporter, you've watched David Turnbull, you know what Billy Gilmore's all about. Who right, so it's, it's Ryan Jack that's went out. Right. Ryan Jack and Kenny McLean are both out. Kenny McLean, right. John so, Fleck is probably going to get his place then as a result, so I think there's one place left. Right, so there's one place. So what we're saying is uh, John Fleck is probably replacing Kenny McLean. I right. would I would say John Fleck is, because he's been in, in and around the squad, I think mm-hmm. John Fleck right. goes. But he, he replaces Kenny McLean, who's a more forward-thinking player. I think if you're going to be pragmatic about it, with the fact that it's Ryan Jack that's been taken out of the squad, a more defensive-minded midfielder, I would say that you've got to take Billy Gilmore. Really? Uh, Kenny McQueen's a defensive midfielder as well, though. That's the thing. I mean, Aye, but, but, but he's, been, he's been replaced by John Fleck, who's right. like a more attacking okay. player, what I'm saying. Right. Listen, okay. Billy Gilmore is around players. Right, see, right now, personally, you, know, you can have a go at me, or, or you don't know about that, but I watch Chelsea, and I think right now we're one of the best teams in the world. I really, really do. When at any point... If I ever said that you know nothing about football. No, but what I'm saying is I feel very vulnerable. I feel very naked on a show sometimes, right? Because you, you've not got your wee bodyguard, wee. That's <laughs> why I'm sitting here fucking fuming. <laughs> <laughs> My bodyguard. So right. what, I'm, what I'm saying is there's a player, right? He That's a boy for the three tunes. Going to the cha- he's going to be in the Champions League final. Let that sink in. You, you can't take a player that's involved in a team, right? Re- regardless, he's only played... I mean, I don't know if, he, if he's played in Europe, but we played uh, the other day against... Um, City. Aye, City. So what I'm saying is... By the way, for me, he controlled that. I know he gave away the penalty, right? But for me, I, I thought he had a tremendous game. 91% accuracy in his passing. He fucking bossed it, too. Yeah, I, I'm a huge fan of Billy Gilmer. I oh, think I've yeah. made that quite clear yeah. on the show. But I'm also a huge fan of David Turnbull. I just don't think Turnbull... Is quite at the level of Billy Gilmer yet, and I think Billy Gilmer could only kick on the, the whole Scotland team. Yeah. My worry is he gets brought into the squad and he doesn't get played. But is that not good for him to be around the squad, get that experience? Listen, though? listen, no. Not when you're at a club like Chelsea. He's locked doing it, that, John. He's you walking anywhere. Not, not that he would do that, but... Straight away, he, he walks into that, like Grado was saying there, he walks into that dressing room, he's one of the highest profile players there. Yeah, but no, but look who's in front of him. I mean, in days gone by with Scotland, but look who's in front of him in the pecking queue. You've got Scott McTominay at Man United. Mm-hmm. You've got John McGinn, £50 million rated player at Aston Villa. Stuart Armstrong's doing a really good job at uh, Southampton this year. I mean, it's one position of the part that Scotland have got. With, the, ex- of- with the exception of John McGinn, I would have Billy Gilmer in ahead of any of them. Whoa. I'm telling you, man, this, this boy is going to the top of the game, John. He's going to the top of the game. Yes, and, yes, I, and yes. I understand what you're saying there. Um, he's 
you know, he comes in and it's good for him to get the experience. But what you need to remember is he's getting a better experience day in, day out exactly at so, his man. club team. What are you talking Understand? about? Like, I'm, what I'm saying is... Dolly McBurney at Scotland. We'll maybe know any more. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> Uh, let's let's just fucking steer clear of that one. Right, okay, let's move on. Then. <laughs> that was a good debate, but it was alright, wasn't it? Aye, it was go, good. Go. Aye. So I think we were, we were singing for the same hymn sheet there, Graham. Yeah. Aye, we'll see how long that lasts. Just wait till the hangway interview. The hangway? Aye, we hangways coming on later. The toddle interview, man. We'll have more. We'll have pre-recorded this. Me and Toe fell out during the the McGregor and Gorham chat, but you'll find out later on. <laughs> if he's drank my juice and anger. I just didn't have you drink there, hanging but hanging back about it there. <laughs> So we'll have more football chat uh, later on, on the open line probably. A uh, big question is this week, after it was alleged that Conor McGregor may be taking over to Celtic after he was asked the question, we're asking what celebrity would you like to take over your club? As I said, our guest today, Kevin Twaddle, uh, wrote a book entitled How to Lose a Million. He's going to be on the show talking through the book, his issues with gambling and also the football teams he played for. tell you about G4 Claims because remember this, if you've been in a road traffic accident, it's not your fault. Here is the crack. G4 Claims can make it easy for you. This is what they'll do. They're going to provide you with complete accident management support that you require. They're going to recover their costs for that fault party. And look, your motor is going to be replaced by a vehicle replacement. It's going to be very much like for like. They're also going to organise your vehicle to be repaired at one of their body shops, which is all approved, and it's going to be sent back to your door. Should your vehicle deemed a right half, don't worry. They'll recover the pre-accident value for your motor and write you a big fat check for it. And best of all, this doesn't cost you a penny because here's what they do. They charge the app fault insurance direct. They don't cold call you. They don't buy your data. Once I've processed your claim, your insurance is going to remain unscathed. Nicole and her team are there, they're not going to take your case on if they don't think that you can help. So if you've been in a road traffic accident or you can somebody that has, get them to get their sales on to G4 Claims on 01698 767172. That's 01698 767172. Get them at notatfaultclaim.com or find them on social media. They are pretty, pretty... Uh, they're busy on social media these days. They're tweeting away and they're retweeting and all the rest of it. G4 claims, not at fault claims. Made it easy. easy. Well, Daft, open line, the open line, where anything goes. Uh, who wants to come on the show this week? We could talk about the Scottish Cup semis. You could talk about your player of the year, or you can maybe suggest a baby name for Grado, like uh, Andy did. He says, I can't believe no one had mentioned a potential baby name for Grado's baby, Jerry Pellini Steveley. <laughs> and that works for a boy or a girl, because it could be Jerry for right. a boy or a girl. So you Jerry. could be Jerry. Jerry. Pellini's actually a nice first name. Pellini. That's quite Pellini a Pellini Steveley. Steveley. That's Pellini Steveley. Oh, that's lovely. Well, that's lovely. It's lovely. Yeah. I can just see the fucking therapy sessions now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm named after a fucking. Uh, well, unfortunately, we are a panel member down today because Stephen's not with us. But we'll crack on because it's a bit unfortunate we've missed Stephen because the first guy that's coming on is a man that wants to speak to Stephen. Um, it's a guy called Kenny from Flip the Mindset podcast. You might have heard that. Oh, Stephen's been on it. Grado's been on it. Um, and Kenny is setting up a football team. Um, and he wants to try and get Mr. Purden to sign and potentially Grado as a coach as well. You're wanting to sign up, Bob? How did this come about? Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> I have to go, first of all, congratulations. Thanks very much, Kenny. I appreciate that, mate. You. Thanks, big man. Good for you, mate. Honestly, I know Thanks how much, much you'll be. Buzzing. I know how buzzing you'll be. I know. So, uh, maybe I'll get you for a wee dad coffee now. Let's do it. Let's do it. Horrible <laughs> I saw a dad coffee. <laughs> I want a dad coffee. So, so Kerry, you wanted to sign Stephen um, for your you're setting up a new football team. First of all, tell us about the football team that you're setting up. I so no, I'm not, I'm not setting it up. So I've took over FC Southside, which is an amateur team playing the uh, GDFC or whatever it is. They play in the second division or and, whatever it is. It's good to know that you've you've done your research, Kerry. <laughs> homework. There's a few amateur leagues anyway, and we're learning them. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's all I need to know. 
Um, so I took over the team, and it's a good group of boys. Derek Johnson was a manager of previous. He's a fantastic boy. He's at Staney Women now. He's got a job at Staney Women, so he's moved up. Derek Johnson, to... as an ex Rangers, uh, Derek no, Johnson. Just to confirm no. that. Or is, no, it no, De- no, or is it no. Derek Johnson that comes on the show every once in a while? Yes. Yes, it'll be Derek that, that comes on the show. Ginger haired boy. Aye. I, he aye. comes on quite a lot, aye. Aye, so took over for him and he, he left a great group of boys. So now I can kind of take them to the next level. I've got a couple of my pals that are ex-pro, a um, couple of ex-junior players coming in and we've already got a good group of boys. So I said to Stevie, I know he likes his football and when I had him on the podcast, he was talking about how he missed it. So I sent him a wee text, Stevie, get your ass into the team. Listen, mate, I'll be honest with you, right? Stephen's not been able to come on the show today because it's raining and shield inch, right? If he signed for you, he would get to play about two games a season, I would say. <laughs> so I think, I think you should move your, your targets. Why don't you try and get Gredo? Listen, he's talking about being a goalkeeping coach. Why don't you get him to be a goalkeeper? The no. fucking stadium would be packed out every week. There'd cool. be big signs like at the wrestling. <laughs> so he would sell foam fingers. Listen, Think about it, man. What I've hung, I've, I hung my gloves up at the ripe old age of 13, mate, and I decided to take up the old wrestling. But I, I, I do believe, I, I think I would be a good goalie coach. I do. I think it'd be good. Ken just looking, knocking the ball in before the game starts and all that and doing the training. I'd love That's not what it's all about, you know? I, it's, it's not just kicking a ball at a goal. Did they, it was, could do that. I, I, but you see the guy, type in Andy Woodman into Google, right, into YouTube. He's, he was asked no goalie coach, mate. He's about 25 staying, right? He's not going to be running about in Den Drills. I bet he had a fucking four, 14 or 15 year career under his belt, mate. Aye, we fucking um, late in Orient. Aye, it's still better than fucking air, 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 air boys. Air boys. <laughs> What's that? See, if you come in, I'll right. pay you a wage. What are we talking here? <laughs> a, box, a box of baby milk every week. <laughs> no, I would. Wait, wait, I'll take twenty plus my, my transport. Twenty twenty pound a week plus my transport and a wee brown envelope. Listen, see if you want to come in and do it. It'll be great. It'll be a good no. laugh, man. It's hey, a great. Do you need them to run the club bar? <laughs> <laughs> I've set a finance system for nearly everything that can go wrong. So the boys will be talk us through your finance system, Ken. Because I'm really intrigued. What what is it all going to? <laughs> this all goes into a Christmas party kitty, presumably. Yeah, I I might do it. So we're going to try and do a couple a year. Right. So what what's the finance system? Talk us through the finance system for Southside. Black, black boots. If not black boots, you get fined. So half the team get a fine on my first day. It was great. Um, <laughs> Talk when the manager's talking, look in the manager's direction. Uh, wow, that's pretty old. Is that old school? <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. <laughs> everything that can go wrong, basically. No, everything that normally goes wrong in an amateur team gets you a fine. So, boys not turning up, boys being late, everything. Is that the truth about the black boots? Aye, aye. I've got a pair of white boots too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, it's really... That's some off, man. No, when, do you, when are you hoping to start playing games? Any kind of, you started playing games already? So we'll start playing games at, um, in August. Well, I tell you, I tell you, we had a new trial. We trained on Sunday there, right? And I've been getting the boots back on since I played pro about seven years ago. And um, the first time I've played since my last knee surgery, and we're playing a game of um, four on four with four at the side of the box, just as one-touch players. And we've got a tri- trialist called Yoon in, right? And the balls came over, kind of my head, right? Yoon's ran in and I flipped it over his head. That's a um, £25 fine. Absolutely. <laughs> One of the boys, boys Jairus, is like, that's how way to make someone no come back. So, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if we'll see him again, but I pulled out one of the I pulled out a box of tricks, man. Hey, so, you know what you're doing, but hey, Kenny scored a win of goals. Who you you played for? You, was it Martin and Livingston? Hey, oh. Annan. Annan, that's right. And you but you were at Livingston as well, weren't you? No. For fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't you fancy come up against you in the box, though, Kenny. You like the. I beat know, me. He's a fuck that hank. I know, man. Eat them like a protein bar, so I will. But no, so I think I'm going to play. I wasn't going to play, but I think I'm going to do it now, man. I'm getting the bite for it. The boys are all fantastic, man. Well, then, Kenny, I tell you what, if you're going to play, you can't manage on the pitch. So, how about a pint sized assistant? 
<laughs> a pint size. <laughs> right, so all the offers are on the table, Kenny. You've got Gregor's your goal coach. There's only, there's only one hang. There's only one. There's only one thing we need to do. We need to change the name of the team to Football Daft FC, mm. FDFC. What a name that would be, by the way. We'd be John, but we can't really John out. John, you look like a right good physio. I can imagine right, with all latex I'll, gloves I'll, and all that, I'll, a mad I'll spray. I'm quite fancy myself. <laughs> I quite fancy myself on a, a team as all, Kerry. So if you need me, I'll be there and all. <laughs> but, by the way, I, I, I see John being a player. Oh, yeah. honestly, I do. Kind of, like a bit, so, like a kind of. You think so, a, fucking a, cheeky bastard? A big, a big no nonsense centre half. I'll do that. I'll do that. Six foot two, Kenny. If you need me, I'm, 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 I'm available. I'm available. Right, I'm, big he, grew, he, grew, he grew up watching Lee Wilkie all oh, these days. <laughs> do you play Grado at all? No. Yeah, I play. No, like, I mean, I get put on in charity games for like, the last ninety seconds. Funnily enough, under Derek Johnson, the Derek Johnson. Any Are game? you any good? No, I'm fucking. T- I'm horrific. But the problem is. I've, I, I, do you know what? In these charity games, I should have faced my fear and went back and go see the next charity game I'm playing. I'm going in goals and that's you, that. You, you. How was we Steve? How was we Purden? I'm not even joking, right? Purden's he's brilliant. He's brilliant. He's solid. Oh, so listen, I, hope, I hope he comes, man. It'll be good for him, you know what I mean? I think it'll be good for him coming and playing every week. It's, it's I'll tell you what, I you know, know you should speak to as well, and I'm not shitting you. You should speak to Brian McPhee and get Brian McPhee in. Because Brian, when he's no when he's no working with the fire brigade, he's still got it. And him and Stephen up front are like fucking Larson and Sutton. That'd be all right. That'd be all right. Well, you got talking be your scout as well, Kenny. And um, listen, sure. thanks for coming on. Good luck with the football team. And uh, if you want to check out Kenny's uh, podcast, it's Flip the Mindset. Check you'll it out. Hear, you'll hear from Grado and Stephen on that as well. Gary Falls yeah. as well. You've got a new episode coming out, haven't you? Yeah, Gary. Gary Falls and uh, I had Biggs and Bash on the day, so. Um, a couple of entertainer boys so I, it's going it's going really really well we've got Ali McCoyce that'll be on in the next kind of month and we've got fuck oh, off you get McCoyce we've been we've trying to get McCoyce for day one sake. we haven't really tried but have we tried you're meant to be in charge of that grade or your pals will I'll speak to Kenny then <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what see, see if you can get Ali McCoyce for football daft I swear to you I'll get fucking Stephen Purden for Southside FC. And I'll play for Mullen. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, thanks Thank for coming you. on, pal. Really appreciate Keep it. Keep in touch, Kenny, my man. Right, see you later, Thank my man. Guys. Take care of yourself. See you later. Kudo, my man. Take care the best. Bye Let's bye. move to our next caller well on the well open done. line. It is Craig, who's... We're currently recording this... Uh, we're, we're at a Wednesday night. It's kind of just after six. The Rangers game's just kicked off and Craig has just stopped watching the Rangers game to come on the open line. That is devotion for you. Craig, oh, thank you for bonnet. coming on the open line. Loving the hat. <laughs> if you can see the video version, Craig is a fantastic fisherman's hat. It's like 1990 has never stopped. Um, 55. 55 hat. There you go. One for you. One for you. Uh, Craig, what do you want to say this week, pal? I knew we're talking about the um, restructuring of the leagues with the Colts going in there, but you don't think there should be something bigger like you know expanding the um, the top flight to 18, 20 teams? And you know, my, my personal preference would be to have like two top divisions of eighteen or twenty teams, and then have regional lower tiers, so the clubs are then you know minimising travel costs. You know, you look at the lower leagues; they've got some of the biggest travelling areas, and they're the poorest clubs in the country. Right. Um, so it's a little bit of sense and sensibility. You know, you, know, you appreciate that you've got, um, you've basically got a TV company dictating to you that you need to have four old firm games a season, but is, is it time for a, like a step change in that and say, no, let's have a proper blooming league? Because I'm personally sick and tired of playing Kelly seven times a season if you get in the cup. I'm, I'm, sick, and, I'm sick and tired of playing Rangers five times a season, mate. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> Fucking believe me, brother. No, I think you, I think you make a, a valid point. Unfortunately, I don't see it changing because television does dictate it, and we're in a we're in a situation now where that's not going to change. So, but, but, but then, too, could you argue? But in the next couple of years, hopefully, telly doesn't dictate it, and with the with the expansion of or the telly, you know, club TV mm-hmm. and personal. But you're right, oh. until that until that changes, and whoever runs Scottish football, they're not interested in changing it. And I don't know, I mean, for years oh, they've yeah. tried to. You know, Grado, you're a you're a big wrestling man. You look at the WWE network, you look at the UFC apps. Yeah, Could like, you imagine it? But but, I, I, mean, think, I think you'll find that I'm on the WWE network quite regularly. You are indeed yeah. an internet sensation like Grado. Um, 
But, you know, it's it's a case of we've got a chief executive that pulls in about 400 grand a year that can't get a sponsor for your league or your cups. So you're not going to trust him to develop a woman's streaming app. When oh, you, you wouldn't trust not. him to go to the shops and get a bloody pint of milk for you. I, I, yeah. think, I think the future, and I'll, I think you usually agree with me here, I think the future is the teams taking management of their own um, viewing, viewing rights. Mm-hmm. But if we can somehow make it so that when the teams play each other, the, the away team gets a cut of the, the viewing figures from like Celtic TV yeah. on Rangers TV. Right, I know that that might not work out perfectly for Celtic and Rangers, but for the good of the game, could you imagine these teams getting some of the money for the Celtic viewership and the Rangers viewership every week online? Yeah. It, would only go, it would only go to uh, make Scottish football a richer place but, altogether. But mate, do you know what? You're, you're bang on. And see that idea with it, you're talking about and you know the, the SPFL network? Man, everybody now is, we all want to see backstage, we all want to see the, the players answer questions. How all they're good, all or nothing, the training. documentaries. Aye, all that. No, if you, that was, could you imagine that was put in place, you pay that, you know, a tenner a month for your Fitbit and you get the, you get your club TVs all involved in that and all, and the way it works. So, I mean, it would be quite uh, difficult to, to work it all out, but... The only thing mate, that, would, the only drawback... I'd never be half it. The only drawback to that, Grado, what you're saying is, that gives the other teams an insight into the backstage workings in the other clubs. No, you but... know what I mean? So that kind of... I know what you're saying, but I would understand if they would do it, like re- record it all the way through the season mm-hmm. and then do like a series at the end of the season. I like the end of the season. But, I, but, you, but you wouldn't be able to watch it. I, but I don't even mean just that. Too. I mean, like, so you turning up at Parkhead is a wee funny thing to interview. Mm-hmm. I can, do you know what I mean? Interview... You're calling me a wee funny thing? <laughs> <laughs> but I, do you know what I mean? Like, aye, I, know like what you mean. Stuff, I know what you mean. Do you know what I mean? Celebrity fans and all that. I'm interested to see, you know, um, look at the finances. I mean, obviously, like, the, the money, like, it would be interesting to expend if Scottish football, like you said, said, we're not going to take the TV money. We're going to run it out, like you say, with an SBFL platform or put it in the club's hands and look at how much money they would make in comparison to what they would get from a Sky exactly. or a BT, it would be a real interesting expense to run that. It's well, not just, know, it's not, what, sorry for interrupting you there again, Craig, but see with the fact that uh, there's loads of people like who watch clubs like Motherwell, Hamilton, Ackies and stuff like that, that maybe can't go to the games for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They don't want to buy a season ticket because they'll not be able to get to each and every game. So the, the opportunity for them to watch that game for the house for, say, a fiver, right? You know what I mean? You've got then the potential, say, for example, there was 10,000 people paying a fiver to watch Motherwell versus Hamilton Ackies, which is a local derby, right? They maybe wouldn't go to the game, but they would pay the fiver to watch it in the house. Yeah. That's that's 50 grand in these well, that, pockets. That's what, that's what I was looking at too as well. I mean, I'm, I'm up in that um, rural Aberdeenshire, you know, and I've got a season ticket for Ibrox. I haven't mm-hmm. been to a game this year. So my mate and I were playing golf. Anyway, it's, it's not just you. Nobody's been to a game this year. <laughs> Aye. Well, no, my, <laughs> mate, my mate and I were saying, were saying uh, Crikey, these season tickets were a great investment. I 500 quid, we haven't seen a game. I said, well, look at the other side of things. We've saved about two and a half grand. <laughs> you know, so that, <laughs> that's, that's, that's true. That's, that's a good that point. Way. Have you lost me, Craig? Hmm? Have you yeah, lost me? Yeah, yeah, two stone. I fucking two know. I know. You're looking well, old boy. Aye. That's how that hat fits, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Craig, always great to hear from you in the open line. Uh, away, enjoy the game. Now we've taken up too much of your time. Away you go, and uh, thanks for coming on Football Daft. Hey, safe lads. Bye bye. See you later. Bye bye. Tatty bye. Tatty bye. And that's it for this week's open line. Keep an eye out on our Twitter if you want to be on next week. Football Daft. Big question. So. Oh. Off the back of talk of Conor McGregor buying Celtic, we decided to ask you this week, what celebrity would you like to see take over your club and why? Now, I've got one. Straight away, my mind goes to the richest man on earth, which is Jeff Bezos. The Amazon boy. The man that owned Amazon. But I think he'd be more suited to Rangers because the cunt doesn't pay taxes. (laughs) (laughs) What about, your, what about yourself, Gredo? He's not really a celebrity, though, too, is he's he? He's not a celebrity, that doesn't count. He's the owner of the company. Right. right, OK, can I go for Elon Musk? Is he a celebrity? No, but... Um, well, he is, because he, he, he presented Saturday Night Live on Saturday night. So he did, I He presented Probably Saturday counts. Night Live. I'll let you off for that one, though. 
But when you're wanting, yeah, you want something about a bit of fucking. Like it's like, do you know? Do you know? Remember when the the, the Fulton Largs won the hundred and forty million? Was it hundred sixty five million? Aye. You'd rather have a punter that won, but then no, because that's still not enough. And you want a mega, mega billionaire, didn't you? you But then, do you want? You know, you hear about all the the, the foreign owners that come in. The, they they just want to make money. Apart from I think Man City's about the only club where they really want. They would they would spend it. They would spend any money, wouldn't they? Aye, but that guy's got another. He's like Scrooge McDuck. He's got a room in his house that's just full of money. Right. You know what I mean. And it's all hundred hundred dollar bills, none of your fucking one pound. Would you want Conor McGregor taking a Celtic? I wouldn't want him having a controlling stake, but it would be some buzz if he took a a a big stake in Celtic. Could you imagine the eyes that that would put on Celtic? Mm -hmm. Could you imagine? Any of the players for the other team try to get fucking wide. Connor's on the <laughs> Connor's on the sidelines like that. Who the fuck is this guy? Who the nothing. fuck is this? You'll do nothing. You'll do nothing. <laughs> so I uh, it would be it would be some buzz thing about it. What about if we bring in Connor McGregor? Rangers maybe bring in I don't know a, a Tyson Fury or something uh, like that. Aye. Would you call him the what, Bishop? Would you call him again Bishop? Who was the, the, Man the Manchester UFC guy? What was his name again? Oh, Michael Bisping. Aye, Bisping, aye. Bisping, aye. Oh, Bisping, no, he'd, he'd, he'd be a good buzz and all, but... You could have Drew McIntyre. So you could, McIntyre. you could have big Drew. Aye, all right, I've beat him. Ah, uh, so yeah. That's true. Yeah. But what about you, Gredo? <laughs> if you're Gredo on that, Carter you, Rangers. You, listen, he's got that go radio money coming in, though, I mean. Aye, right, mate, aye. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe need to put in a couple extra shifts, man. Then they'll fucking. I need the overtime. Did it? Did it? Did it? Did it? Did it travel? No, back to the travel. And and that was uh, Luther Vandross with never too much here on Go Radio. Yeah, I'm with you, Graham Stevie, and I'm with you through the night. <laughs> 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 and that's my audition for Go Radio. <laughs> so anyway, we'll get to uh, what some of the some of the punters have come in and said Blair. Straight off the bat comes out with one that the both of us have fucking no even thought about, Gredo. I know. Vince I McMahon. The billion dollar strut before he unfurls the flag on title day, then grabs him out and goes to the crowd. I'm your genetic jackhammer. <laughs> the, be the best would be if a manager was not pulling his weight and he can fire the man. In the middle Prince of the pitch. <laughs> You're fired. Neil Lennon. Yeah. You're fired. You know what? <laughs> I swear to God, years ago, there was a rumour about Vince McMahon and Rangers. See, back in the dark days. Was it no Shane McMahon? Was it maybe? Maybe there's it was, actually. There's all the time in Newcastle. There's, it comes up every couple of years Aye. that Vince McMahon is going to buy Newcastle. All the time it happens. So. Aye, so, do you know what? You see if Vince McMahon get involved in football, could you imagine the promos on Sky Sports? <laughs> oh my God, it would be tremendous. Ricky says, Hugh Hefner is when it's all gone wrong and apart, the bunnies can be a welcome distraction. Well, Ricky, I've got to break some sad news to you. He's dead. Hugh's been gone for a few years now. <laughs> John says, Kevin Bridges at Celtic is, could use a laugh after a season. <laughs> See, to be honest with you, John, this season's been one big fucking joke. <laughs> Tweety Pie says, Donald Trump. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> what club, but? Uh, maybe Livingston or something like that. I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now, we won that league. I don't care what anyone says. We won the league. <laughs> Aiden says, Calvin Harris, he's had them free spoils, get money. Plus, we would have good music pre match instead of the shite we play the now. Ryan says, Mr. Bean for Falkirk. <laughs> After the shambles of a decision making by the board in recent years has unpredictably would be seen as somewhat of an improvement. <laughs> John by the way, I'll tell you what, hold on. Rune Atkinson is a very, very rich man. Ah, he's a shrewd guy. He's, he's a, a very guy. rich man. Want me to tell you why? Because it's the only programme that's in every country in the world. Every single country because he doesn't talk. He doesn't talk. Genius. And not only that, as even the likes of when everything went YouTube, he's all over the YouTube and all. Yep. All his stuff on YouTube, he gets paid for it. I watched a documentary about it not lot. long ago. It was, I think it was the 25th or the 30th anniversary. Right. Of Mr Bean and me and Sammy love Mr Bean. And by the way, do you know how many episodes he made, he made of Mr Bean? Was it not only 16 or something like 13 or 14, mate. Aye, I, I know. Mean, it's brilliant, man. Uh, uh, Sean says The Rock, he's done pretty much everything else, so why not run a club? Also, can you imagine him asking Doncaster if he likes pie? <laughs> <laughs> 
Reese says Elon Musk to take out at Bucky Fissle so we can get rockets to the away games. <laughs> <laughs> Bomber Brown says Gordon Ramsay because a half time pies would be top draw. That's quite good. Disco Dave says Paul Chuckle at Celtic as they gave us a good laugh this season. Oh, there we go. Is that Paul, so Paul Chuckle? The, uh, Paul's still alive. It's Paul's Barry that not? died, wasn't it? Barry. Uh, uh, yeah. Paul, Paul's still Paul, alive. It was Barry that died. Paul, Paul by the way, if you're wanting to entertain, man, Paul Chuckle tweets him making his dinner and all that and he's dancing about to 80 songs and all that. He's good crack on Twitter. William says, would have been Terry Monroe, R.I.P. <laughs> It's the player profile playoff with piesports.com and um, you can win yourself pies on this show every week and if you want to buy them it's dead easy go to piesports.com they've got a range of pies up on their website you can buy lots of different packs there uh, not long till the end of the season so get in while you're watching the games um you can also do it via their SOS hotline. That's send our savories. That's 0141 739 They'll deliver free of charge to loads of postcodes across Scotland. Check out the website for details. And you can get your pies in for the weekend's games. Um, so every week, like I say, we like to give away the pies. And this week is no different as we welcome to Football Daft, John Mitchell. How are you doing, John? I'm good, man. How are you? Not bad. Uh, you, you are a Rangers supporter. Um, yep. Wow, it's good to have one of you on the show. We don't get now. many of you on here, so it's good. To I, feel, I feel very underrepresented in the community. <laughs> that mean? <laughs> uh, this, guy, this guy speaks well. I think he could replace Stevie. Ah, I would, do you know it's funny you say that? Too, I was going, mate. You fancy sticking on doing the rest of the show, man? <laughs> <laughs> fancy giving us a wee horn? Was it uh, dead easy? Uh, you've heard the show before, John, so you you know the rules. I'm going to read out a player description from a season. Um, if you know who the player is, you're buzzing with your buzzer. Uh, if you get it wrong, you're out of the game. We continue with our contestant. First to two wins. Uh, right, so who would you like to play, John? We'll give you an option this week. Uh, so I'll, I'll take two. We'll go all fun then. All right, oh. The almanac, as he's now calling himself. Uh, uh, so, yeah, the to- the Tolmanac. The Tolman. <laughs> I've heard that one recently. Did you just say that last week? Uh, it's my, that's my movie podcast name, Gregor. Oh, sorry, mate. Right. <laughs> and if you haven't listened to it, it's called The Great Scott Cinema Club Podcast. I'm sure my brother yeah, listened to it, did not I fucking loved it, mate. Yeah, yeah. Um, right, boys, we're going back to a fairly recent season, 2008-2009, so not that far away. What I'd, I'd have won that season. Oh, uh, would you have... Uh, John, what what age would you have been about then? Uh, 2008 is the year after we were in Manchester. When I'd be about 15, 16. 15, 16. So that was a uh, double for Rangers that season, winning the league and Scottish Cup. Celtic picking up the League Cup. It was the year that Gretna went to the wall as well, and in replacing them in the, the third division. And fucking Rangers beat Falkirk in the Scottish Cup final, but we won't go into that. That's Nacho Novo, isn't it? Yeah. That was Nacho Novo. It's it in Scott Arfield for a hot dog. Uh, uh, Hellier uh, strike. Hellier strike. Murder. We pumpkins that day as well. Fucking nightmare. Oh, anyway. Anyway, that's by the by. You're going to be playing uh, to Old Firm. Going back to that season. What's your buzzer going to be, John? Uh, to. That's going to be. <laughs> what's, <laughs> yeah, fuck what's your buzzer going to be? A psychologist. John. <laughs> right. This uh, is going to be, well played. This is really going to fuck with my head while I'm doing this. Right. Okay. <laughs> First player out. Here we go. Uh, this experienced centre half found himself at Falkirk after spells at Rangers. Dundee United, Hearts, and also Celtic. Oh, John. John was in first. Nah, I've made an arse because the Celtic threw me at the end. I was going to say Andy Webster, but... It's not. It's Stephen Presley. It is so Stephen Presley. Um, 1-0, Chris Toe. It was the Celtic at the end that put me after. Yeah. One of the few play, uh, players to play for both sets of the old firm. Um, right, next player out. This was the final season of his first spell at Motherwell for the striker, who took over... Chris McFadden. Oh no no no! I was no. Jesus McFadden last week, was it no? Rad McFadden, I was. Yeah. Uh, who? T- I'll continue for you, John. Who took over Phil O'Donnell's squad number of ten? 
He was voted Player of the Season this year before and made two before and made two hundred and nineteen appearances for Motherwell, uh, scoring forty nine <laughs> goals before moving to Bristol City. Oh. After a spell with also Bristol Rovers, he returned to Scotland with Dundee before returning to Motherwell, then on to St Mirren. He only got two caps for Scotland, but managed to score a goal in an away victory against the Czech Republic. His first name. His first name's oh. David John. His first name's David. On you go. Oh, this is him. David he's setting, Hanna. He's setting you up here. Come on, the tapping's here, John. I know, it's... it's I do you know, the, the one against Czech Republic is the one that stumped me. I, I'm, I can't remember who that was. I've, I genuinely nah, can't think. Nah, okay, David Clarkson, former guest on this show. All right. This Icelandic international signed for Hearts in 2006. I know predominantly a midfielder was utilised by Shabal Azo in this season as a right back through his versatility, meaning he played midfield, centre half, and even left back during the season. He was given the number four shirt following Christoph Bear's departure in January and went on to play at Tincastle for a few more year, years before also moving to Wolves. No idea. No, no idea. He's Icelandic, so it ends in sun, doesn't it? But it does end that, in I'm, sun. Well done. Other than that, I'm lost. D- David Clarkson. <laughs> <laughs> right, he's a struggler. Edgar Jonsson, remember Edgar, him? Edgar Jonsson. No. Wait, I was there for Hearts. I remember him, but I would never have got that. Can, right, can, can I get this one? Come on, this for the win, Paul, because you better win because I've got no players left. You two right. are useless. Right. This Dutch centre half moved to Celtic from John to Glenn Lovins. Correct. Well done. Ah. By the way, you put up a good fight, John. I'll tell you that. Aye, ah, smashing dinner. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Don't worry. You can have the pies, John. Surprisingly. It's me, I, I listen to this every week, and every week I'm going, I know that. I'm dead, sir. Oh, thanks very much for coming on. Remember, if you want to get pies from. Hey, wait a minute, pies, John. Oh, you can have the pies, remember. You You're getting some pies, brother. That. What a nice oh, guy. What a sportsman, man. You yeah. can get that to your wings before they have their, their fruit. <laughs> <laughs> so, you get your pies at piesports.com. John. <laughs>
doing the 14 nine just running every couple of days. Mentally, physically, the best thing I've ever, ever done. And uh, these steps have helped me change my life. I, I, I didn't like to say all the kind of great things that have happened because the last year has been difficult for a lot of people. It's been difficult for me as well. I've no what. But I've been so blessed. I've been able to homeschool my wee girl. Um, things that I would never have been able to do because I'm always busy with my, my NB business. So mm. I just feel very, uh, I feel very, ah, I, I've been very, very fortunate, very lucky that the government have helped a wee bit as well. The guard self-employed boys um, that have got their own business and stuff like that. So no, feeling very grateful. It's tell us, tell us a wee bit about Sorry, that. Go. What is, what is the, the your own business, Kev? What is it you're doing? At my own business is that I'm a painter and decorator. I was a painter before I played football, so mm -hmm. I've done my apprenticeship, then I worked for a couple of years with a boy, and uh, yeah, so I've been a painter kind of all my days. Excellent. Do you know what I might know? So obviously you said that you that you just joined this 12-step uh, programme last year. I mean, I know you've you've highlighted your issues for years and years and years, but was this the, the, the first time that you actually addressed it and went to something like the, 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 the anonymous group that you went to or, or was this you can no. I get back to well, no, no I've, I've been doing meet, I've been doing meetings since October of, October the 5th 2004 when I stopped right. gambling um, I've been doing meetings this was just you know what last year I was in a position where I was a wee bit sick and tired of being sick and tired hard to explain but I'd stopped gambling but I'd done nothing else I'd never changed the person I was still lying cheating manipulating still I just still wasn't a very nice individual and you know what I thought there was meant to life in that I wanted to be a better person and mm -hmm. I'd heard this thing I've heard it all the way through my, my time in GA I've heard about this 12 step recovery program and I tried it in 2016 I got the step form chucked it I wasn't ready for doing it and it's the greatest thing I've the hardest thing I've ever done in my life with a shadow of doubt it's the most soul searching nine months that but my word, the best thing I've ever, ever done, for sure. Wow. You know what? It's a, like, obviously, your story is, is pretty inspiring. I must admit, I've, I've had a read through, and you've been extremely honest in your book. Um, you spoke about how uh, there just now, how you you'd only recently stopped lying and cheating, but obviously back when you were you were gambling, you were stealing and stuff like that as well. Um, it's For some reason, I don't know why, I never ever seen gambling as as an addiction, I, I always thought of addictions as like drugs, drink, um, like smoking and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? I never ever seen gambling as an addiction because it never affected me, right? But recently, um, over over the past couple of years, I kind of realised that I had a bit of a problem with drink. When I was when I was drinking, I just it, it turned me into a horrible person, and I realised it was it wasn't good for me, so I got rid of it. How, what was it that finally pushed you? What was it that, that gave you the, the slapper across the face, basically? Because I know what it was for me personally, right? But what was it for you that gave you the slap across the face that you said, right, I need to change something here? I think I've had two situations like that. I had it in 2004. I mean, I tried to commit suicide in 2004. I ended up in hospital really nowhere. And I just, I'd, I'd reached a point in life. I'd lost my relationship and stuff like that. I just, my life, had spiralled out of control. I heard words from someone saying to me that you've done so much in life and you've got nothing to show for it. And and it was it came for someone who kind of I cared about as well. And it just it absolutely ripped the heart out of me. And I thought, you know what, I need to stop doing what I'm doing, gambling. I need to change and I need to... But you know what, I spent all the years for 2000, 2004, I did, I did stop gambling, but I never changed. And, and there was a wise old man when I walked into the meeting said, said to me, someone who I got really close to, someone who I looked up to, inspired to as well, who died a few years ago. Um, and I spent six months after work every day going to see him in the Western Journal. I love the guy, old guy. Um, but he said to me, you know what, if the person doesn't change that walked in the door, you walk back out the door the same person. And it, it, it was it was an inevitable that I was going to walk back out the door the same person because I've never changed. I've never done nothing to see why I was an angry person, why I was fully ego, why I had so much pride, so much... I just had all these character defects that, and I had never really heard of this 12-step programme in 2016. Um, and as I said, I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll try that. I didn't want to be angry with people. I didn't want to be Ken, just, just a horrible individual. And But I just wasn't ready for it. But you know what? Last January 28th, I'd reached a point in my life where I just, everything, everything in my life had just, I'd stopped gambling for all these years, but nothing had changed. And I wanted to change. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to get, so I got a sponsor who was in A, who was an alcoholic. <laughs> And I, he's became probably, ah, he's like another fatherly figure to me, someone who's changed my life about and gave me an opportunity to be the person on the day. Obviously, you've wrote a book, Kevin.
But do you think right now there is enough spotlight being put on the old gambling? I think you're right. You're right what you're saying. I think nowadays is mental health. Mental health nowadays is kind of huge. I mean, I was at Motherwell, and I mean, I, I was seeing a doctor for anxiety and depression. I mean, I was living the fucking greatest life in the world as a football right. player. Nobody would have ever have seen the the turmoil and the horrible kind of feeling inside the kind of I mean, living an emotional roller coaster. I was high as a kite one minute, winning fortunes, losing fortunes next to game minute, and suicidal. So. Uh, you know what, I'd I done my foreword with Paul Merson. I went to meet Paul Merson and done my foreword as well. And he said something to me back in the day and I thought, I've, I've never ever seen it kind of in that way. But he said to me, no, you can watch, see somebody coming down the street and you can tell that they take drink. You can see somebody coming down the road and you can see they take drugs. But you can't see somebody who's just lost all their wages and suicidal as being gambling. And gambling's such a hidden, it's such a hidden killer. And the worst thing, especially through this pandemic as well, is a lot of people have started going online and doing stuff and it's the, it's, right. it's the hidden killer. Um, oh, that's right, so that's what I was going to say Yeah, at the beginning, Kevin, when Gredo was saying how you've been day-to-day for the pandemic started, I was actually going to mention it must have, that must have put extra pressure on you. It really must have, because it's so easy just now to get a bet on, right, regardless of where you are. You know, if you're sitting at work, you open up your phone, you've got an app, you can, you can stick a bet on. You're in the house, you've got your computer open, go on to the website, you can get a bet on, you can phone up to put a bet on. It's surely do you feel that there should be more regulation? Well, when you're when you're talking about football at the time, obviously Mark Mark and Bugbear is I mean, Scottish football's riddled with Ken Labooks, Willie Hills, all these different things, yet football players are feared to come out and they I mean, I was doing talks with the PFA and stuff like that. There's a lot of players came to me, and there's a lot of players I deal with privately as well, just now that play Premiership in England. People that play in the Scottish Premier League, people that can he come out and say, "Listen, I'm really struggling," and because the papers get it, and then their names broke through mud, and it's sad. It's sad that society is a story like that for a paper to be bringing someone to. But you know what? It's it's not even the person that you, I mean, the person you become, but it's the amount of people you take down with as well. I mean, families are ripped apart. I've 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 stole. I've, I've stole, I would have left my mum and dad homeless. I hate to say it. I'm the most family boy as well, but I was rife with addiction and. I'd have left him homeless. It wasn't for my dad being a wee bit clever than what my mum was. Um, I'd have left him homeless. And it's such a travesty because, you know what, I've had so many amazing times with my mum and dad, morals, values, the way I was brought up. And I lost all him. Gambling in one hand, addiction in the other. There was ever, ever going to be one winner. So, But listen, there's, there, anybody can go and put bets on now. Anybody can go and drink. Anybody can take drugs. You can. And it's, it's Unfortunately, it is a choice at the end of the day. And... It's all right for me to blame Ladbrokes and blame Willie Hills and blame mm. all these. I didn't do that today at the end of the day. I had choices to make. I didn't make all the right choices. I take responsibilities for the things that I've kind of done and to the people that I've done them to. I've been able to make amends to a lot of people and a lot of places and a lot of things. And mm. so, aye, but it's sad because you know what? People people didn't see a way out as well, which is a sad part. But, and as you said, there's one of your friends who goes away. And aye, it's just, it's horrendous. What I wanted yep. to, to ask you, Kev, was. What's the connection, do you think, with, with, with young football players or any football players at any age with the likes of gambling? You said, obviously, you had issues with anxiety and depression. Is it is it that? Is it loneliness? Is it the money that they're getting? Is it the boredom? Or is it all of them? Is it a big fight? You know what? It's no... It's, it's, I have to say to you, gambling, gambling is an epidemic in life. It's not just in football. Again, Aye. obviously, we don't want to talk about football, but... It doesn't matter what you do, you can. I mean, I've watched people in my rooms that are brain surgeons, they're in GA, they're, they're brain surgeons, they're people performing on people's brains, but they've got problems with gambling. And it's every walk of life in football for young kids. It's just the, it's the culture. See, when I, I was going in football clubs, the only clubs that didn't have problems with gambling were Rangers and Celtic because they're fairly foreign people. Foreign people didn't have the, they have a different, it's, it's a different, they didn't understand why people would want to go and spend all their money or lose their money or Scottish culture, British culture. It's just huge, gambling's massive. And you find that most foreigners in Scottish football didn't bet. Um, it's just, it's, and, and I, as I said, I feel for the young kids, there's, it's, you're embroiled in it, you're in the culture, everybody is talking about it in the dressing room. And Scottish football sitting talking now about, listen, um, if anybody's gambling on football, it can be any football at all, world football, your own football, whatever football you're gambling on, you're allowed to do. I'll guarantee you, most Fridays, if you were to go around, all Scottish clubs for the Premier to the first division, the second, the third division, and you were to see who was putting bets on, you'd have no football. Because I'll guarantee you 85, 90 percent of people mm. put football bets on the Saturday. Mm. Mental. It's not so some of it comes out and some of it doesn't, no. 
you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I, mean, I think, obviously, like, for example, for talking to like Ian Black, when it happened with Ian Black, um, it was because he had bet against Rangers, bet, betting against your own team. Now, straight away, that, that raises an issue, right? Now, I don't see, personally, I don't see the problem in a footballer having a, having a bet as long as they're not gambling against their own team. You know what I mean? I don't think that there's yeah. any issues there. Right. I'd, I've got to say, I'd, I'd have been jailed. See if, it, see if it was now, and I didn't say it with, I didn't say it with any pride whatsoever, it's disgusting. I'd have been jailed. I'd have been jailed. I'd have been jailed for getting booked, for kicking people, getting sent off. I, I can remember Billy Davis used to say to us, take centers, kick the ball down at the corner flag, and everybody push up and we start the game down there. You can fucking bet in the first corner to go out now, first, first shy. Or, Aye, that's I'd right. Have been, I'd, I'd have been jailed. Uh, do you remember, I, mean, a, I think it was a couple of years ago, there was a, there was a, a junior game or something like that. And one of the bets was for the first throw in to be in the first 10 seconds. And the guy just kicked it straight out for centre. And it turned, it turned out that all of the... I don't think the that there, was, there wasn't regulations on the junior game in gambling at the time or something like that. But both teams were on it. Both teams had, had <laughs> money on the, on the ball going out in the first 10 seconds. So, it's, uh, yes. I, like you said, it would be quite easy if, if, it, was as, if it was as accessible now, uh, that back then as it is now. It would have been you'd have been making a fortune. You would have been making a fortune. You know what I mean. Yes, and what you said, you'd you'd end up in the jail. I think that I think years ago I used to say and people used to laugh at me. This is when I was doing the talks with PFA. I used to say, you know what? It'll not be long before Scottish football has some thingies for match fixing. It was in it was in um, Asia, coming to America, came into South America, and again it came into Europe. And there's people being investigated in Scottish football now that maybe knows about there's, there's high profile football players getting investigated there, there's things their whole phone's been taken off from things been just because ga- gambling is gambling's huge it's absolutely that's, a, that's, a, that's an eye opener that yeah, yeah, definitely. see how it's part of your recovery right sometimes but surely you must have to sit back sometimes right and go and obviously you've had your issues you've had your problems major major problems but at the end of the day, man, you were a heart supporter as a boy, yeah. Yeah. You, I mean, you, you played for your your boyhood heroes. You played, you played football at a level that a lot of folk would have would have loved the chance to play professional football. So I think it sometimes you've got to sit down and go and 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 think back to the the good memories that when you you know turning up to Ten Castle to play and I sat they must have been brilliant. To be fair, I mean, I was at, I was at Hertz. Fuck, I didn't really perform. To be fair, I mean, that was when my that was when my my life is fucking out of control, um, and, it, and it was out of control. And I'll never know how well I've done in my football. I don't know how I've ever ever done half the decent things I've done in life in football because I mean my life was just an absolute. I mean the way I was spending my weekends, buried and carrying on, and I just it was all right for people. As you said earlier on, we're sitting talking. Someone saying you wear my mask. I had a mask on for every situation that I was in. People mm. loved me. I would think if you went with most people at most football clubs, all loved me. I was a character. I was a joker. Great with women, carrying on, drinking, partying, still performing at the weekends, playing football. But you know what? I, I mean, my dad, I can remember my dad said to me in 2004 as well. He said to me that it was the most proud. I've never, I've never ever seen my dad emotional. I broke down in front of him to tell him I needed help. And he says, you know what? My dad followed me everywhere with the football. All the world he's followed me. And he, he said to me, you know what's the most proudest I've ever been here. Forget your football, forget everything you've done. And you know what? Because of my daughter, probably, it's nice to see wee things that people put on. I was having a laugh the other week here. Somebody was doing a wedding for Wraith and they had one of my names as their table, one a table and they were asking if I could come to the wedding and that as well. Your name to be at somebody's wedding and things like that on a table. It's nice. It is really nice to... And because I've got a daughter, it's nice to have like a DVD, like my, I'm saying all my goals, I never had very many, but all my goals on DVD scrapbooks, it's nice for all the things that in the memorabilia connections my mum and dad kept when I was playing because I would have had nothing, I wouldn't have kept nothing, I didn't care um, so for my daughter it's nice to see all these nice things but you know what, I'm, I'm more proud of the person on the day rather than the person I was when I played football to be honest with you but it was nice, just listen I played I played with, with Hertz as I said my boy who tears but if I was if I was reminiscing through my football career Hertz is not a club that, yeah. and it's a shame because I've watched them all around the world as well before I played football. I watched them for six years as a as a mad fan, as a club that I didn't I didn't resignate any of my good times with. My good times were when I was a captain in the Premier League of Motherwell for three, four years, 
St Johnston, Wraith, Morton, all the clubs I've been at have had such an amazing time with amazing people and amazing support with friends, family and supporters, even to now. Uh, Hertz, though, Hertz was a disaster, man. Hertz was absolutely, I mean, fucking I had sheriff officers at Tynecastle and everything searching really? for me. I mean, that's, that's amazing. And, I, and listen, I didn't, it's no we pride I say that's embarrassment, but you know what, that's where my life was. My life is upside down, eh? Well, it's funny you're saying the like your better times were at Motherwell and Wraith Rovers and what have you. But you moved for Wraith Rovers to to Morton for a hundred and fifty thousand pound, right? Now that that's madness. It's madness when you think about the the Scottish game just now. I mean, yeah. I don't think that there's a team out with probably the top five in in the Scottish Premier League that could afford a fee like £150,000. So for Morton to be able to pay that back in the day, that, it, you forget how much money was in the Scottish game back then, don't you? Billy, I can remember Billy Stark signing me and sitting down with his, and he sat down with Frank Connor and Frank was a proper crazy character. Like, I mean, you could, Billy Stark would come in the dressing room and start, like, come in the dressing room and say to the boys, listen, we've got a draw today, it was nil-nil, it's no great, but you know what, let's get change, get to the road, have a good night tonight and, He'd walk out the door and Frank would lock the door, Frank Connor. I mean, he couldn't walk, he could hardly talk. He out with his walking stick going, absolutely apeshit. <laughs> every, sing, every single individual. And you were waiting, and I was always number seven at most clubs that I played at. You were always waiting because you used to go for one, and you think to yourself, please, Frank, didn't he, just didn't even mental. But I can remember the two sitting and doing in front of me, and um, Billy starts saying to me, you know what, it's, that, it's actually embarrassing. This is what they were actually saying to me, Tay. It's embarrassing <laughs> that you're actually here. And signing, he says, I can remember we were at Celtic. And because of politics, and I think it was because of my grandmother, to be fair, you would have been at Celtic. Because of politics, you never got there. Um, he says, it's embarrassing you're here. He says, it, it, listen, mate, Billy, Billy start, Billy keep my, my book signing as well, my book launch. And Billy knew I had problems away for the fat boy. He tried to, he tried to change me. I just wasn't ready to change. And he was an amazing individual, great family guy. So was Frank. And I still keep contact with the two of them now, as I do Billy Davis. But... And he was sitting down in front of me saying, what the fuck are you doing at Morton? Hey, Morton? See, you should be playing some of that because I was buzzing to get to Morton. It was mere money and uh, just crazy, man. Absolute mental. Frank Connor, the only old firm manager with a 100% record. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, very true. Very Kim. true. I think I get that from about every time I speak to him as well. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us this one, and you've, you, you mentioned previously before we started recording that you didn't have a great time under Tommy McLean. Um, as a manager, what was it? What was the reason for that? Was it? I always thought Tommy McLean came across as a cantankerous bastard. To be honest with you, uh, you know what? He, by the way, I was only he was only my manager for three weeks. He came in. He came in. Jimmy Thompson was the manager. Then Ian Monroe came in. No, sorry, um, I think we came in for two, three days, and he went away at United. He got offered the job at United. He went away at United, but I don't know. He, you know what? He, and and the, the older you get as well, when you can see. He was just old school. He was just, he wasn't a bully, but he verged on. And that, by the way, I wouldn't listen to anybody shite. It wouldn't matter what anybody was saying to me. Everybody, used to be, everybody kind of used to be scared there, a lot of people like that. That didn't bother me. I, I was I was above all that. I wasn't above all that, but I thought I was. Um, and I wouldn't, I kind of wouldn't listen to anybody shite, to be honest. And I just, he, I don't know, he just, I don't know. He, for me, he was very old school, very... Didn't bring the best out in the boys, but you know what? He's done amazing with his football career at the end of the day. I just wasn't in a position to to listen probably to to him. So no, I'll take my hat off to him, him and Jim McLean. They've done brilliant for football back in the day. It's just football's evolved now, eh? It's a lot more. Aye. I mean, you wouldn't have got you wouldn't have got away with a lot of the things that these boys got away with back in the day. You wouldn't have I mean, got away I, with them nowadays. Kind of seen them nowadays. So we were saying that. It's like, I think that that's a, a big part of the problem with what happened with Celtic this season. Yep. You know, totally, I, I totally agree. Totally agree. Um, I, I mean, it's strange to see Celtic in the state they're in the now. Just, it's a shame. It, well, I mean, it's a shame as well. I mean, I'm a, I'm a jambo, but it's, it's probably a shame for. I mean, Rangers have done, done amazing this season. I'm not, a, I'm not really a Celtic or a Rangers. I don't really, can you really follow any teams now? To be fair, but it's Rangers have done amazing. Stephen Gerrard's done amazing. It's just a shame to see Celtic in the state they're in because the quality of the players that are there now. I just, I was lucky, and I'll never, um, there'll be a lot of people I'll never get the opportunities off. I mean, I've played against Gaza, Loudrop, De Canio, Cadets, Larsons, Van Bronckhorst. I've played against all the greats that you'll, 
I mean, you're, the balls, you're never going to get the opportunities in Scottish football that have no chance. been lucky enough. Gaza, a lot of the players that, ah, he just can't even get his, I got to spend five minutes with Gaza as well before we he played us, Rangers were playing, they've actually scored as well. And just sitting in the, I'm sitting in, I used to go to the, do some pedaling on the bike before I used to do it in the warm up at Wraith and he'd come in and sit and speak to him for five minutes. And honestly, I, I was, I was gobsmacked. I, probably, <laughs> I never ever found myself getting starstruck because I thought I was better than everybody else. <laughs> believe me, I wasn't. I was, I was just a, an actual tit. But he came in and actually we were speaking about his life and his wife and Kit, just family and I just, I was, okay. and then, you know what, we came out and after about 15 minutes, Tony Ruggie ran into the goalkeeper, Theo Snelders, and the ball came away out to the side and I hit it for a way out wide and scored and we were, we're all celebrating and we were all jumping and doing everything. I was walking back to the half railing line and he said to me, you can't, if I knew you were going to score, I wouldn't have fucking spoke to you earlier. <laughs> and, like, and, even, and even to this day, even to this day, I mean, just him and Ali McCoy, they were just sitting laughing and I thought, you know what, what a, what a legend. He was a proper... Proper, proper, proper legend, man. I love the guy. Brilliant. You know what? Uh, it's funny. I, I know I'm going to get slated here because I always say I used to go and watch teams, right? But one of my dad's best pals was Peter Heatherston. Right. Yeah, and, brilliant and, legend. And, right. And when and when Peter when Peter was at Wraith Rovers, I used to go to Starts Park quite a lot, right? Great lad. Tony Rougier was an absolute fucking baller, wasn't he? What a uh, player brilliant. Tony Rougier was, man. Brilliant. Honestly, it's funny you mention him there. But he was so. He was so laid back, he was horizontal. I mean, even people giving him abuse. I can remember managers wanting to put a rocket up his ass to try to get him to, oh, he'd made ability to him. But by the way, Peter Hellison, the great lad as well. Brilliant boy. We are talking earlier on and the, the teammates bit you were going on about the goalie, Andy Gorham as well. What, um, did you have a, a sort of relationship with him? Was it at Motherwell that you, you played alongside him? It was... I, I mean, what, what I loved about the goalie was, what I loved about him was, you know what, he was a proper... Like, I mean, you're going to be starstruck. You see him, you're going to be starstruck. I mean, I came for playing, like, first edition. I'd had a shot in the Premier League with eighth. You're going and you're walking in and seeing Andy Gorham. I mean, he was a proper legend. I've watched him, Ken, and seen this boy that's... You know what I loved about him? And, and even to this day, it means even more to me now. My mum and dad used to come to the games and he used to sit in the tea lounge. Mum and dad were really, really quiet people. And he used to come in and he used to sit and give him a cuddle and that and talk to my dad. And I thought, you know what, that's... That, that that's goes a long way, didn't it? Oh, listen, that for me is that for me. Forget his football ability. That for me, that's priceless because there's no lot of people that would ever, ever do that. We had a lot of stars at Motherwell at the time as well. And Don Goodman, I mean, he, these boys are at my wedding. Jed, Don, um, Andy Gorham, they were all at my wedding. Kind of boys took their time to come up for doing south to come into the wedding. And I just, the goalie was, the goalie was just, and you know what? I had, I had kind of the same. He lived behind this big mask as well. I mean, he, I mean, he was. I mean, I, I never ever probably knew how big Andy Gordon was, man. But we we used to go for nights. You couldn't go to Glasgow. I used to go to all these wee dingy places. All these old men playing dominoes and all that. All the boys were about carrying on with women and all that. I used to sit for the goalie because I, I felt for him. He couldn't go to Glasgow for getting abuse and he just sees a goalie, but he, he was absolutely different world. Yes. Oh my god! Tell, tell me that's my hero. Tell me this one, Kevin. Right? Over, the, over the past few weeks, Gredo and Stephen have started to see Alan McGregor through these legendary oh, spectacles, it. right? Are you the same as me? I don't think Alan McGregor is even close to Andy Gorham. I genuinely don't. You, you can't you know, say he's no close. I, you mate, know, it, I, what you need to remember is Gorham done it in a different time when they were playing against much better opposition week in, week out, right? right. Gorham was the top of the class every fucking week. Top of the class every week. McGregor's doing it against a lower level of competition. I'm he sorry. Does it in Europe. He does it in Europe. Aye, against a lower level of competition. Gorham was doing it in the Champions League. Aye, but McGregor's done it in the Champions League as well. McGregor's done it in the Champions League say, as well. Turn that up, you. I would say... He can't uh, say that he's no close to it. That's what I'm I would saying. Say Alan, I would say Alan McGregor this year has been absolutely phenomenal. Listen, you, you watch legends. There's been legends on the telly being asked the same question and they're all... They're all humming and hawing, and I know Giggsy as well. Um, I know him really well. I was an Edinburgh boy as well. So for me, they'll never, the Rangers will never ever have another Andy Gorham. Just, just my personal opinion. By the way, Giggsy's a, a wonderful, wonderful. Oh, don't get me wrong. He is a tremendous goalie. I, I hate Andy him. Gorham, but Andy <laughs> Gorham is Andy Gorham was. And see the funny thing about Andy Gorham was Andy Gorham is cut with the same cloth as Giggsy as well. You lose goals in training. 
they would they would be the chase you about the I, I had as many arguments with a goalie as well because I wasn't a trainer either. And you'd get a goal away and he'd be sitting shouting at you and be like, who the fuck where are you shouting at? No, I mean he just they hated getting beat, they hated Aye. losing goals. But you know what? The goalie I've see the goalie, the goalie never turned up. The goalie was the goalie was at Bevian that hardly ever turned up for training. <laughs> he'd, he'd be Bevian all week and Stevie Woods would Stevie Woods would train him like a like a bear all week and being amazing and the goalie would turn up with Saturday morning Rich. and play on a Saturday and it would be phenomenal. If he had, if the goalie had a, a better attitude, no no regards, I'm talking about away from football, if he had a better attitude, the goalie would have been away to the world, he would have been the world's best. He, the goalie was, with what he, with what he the, way, the way he lived his life and the way he was, he was, he was nothing short of a miracle. He was, he was phenomenal. Oh, I've been lucky I had Anthony Emi, like Craig Gordon, can I've been lucky enough to play with a lot of good goalkeepers? Maybe I'll ever touch a goal. That's finished. I think he was the best player, the best goalkeeper in the world at one point. I genuinely do think he was the best goalkeeper in the world at one point. I think he's I, the, I, the best goal in the world right now. <laughs> best drinker. <laughs> <laughs> so you played under Craig Levine. Um, now we've had Craig on the show, and his his public persona is definitely different. To what we encountered on the show, he was funny. His part of his magic. Was he like that in the dressing room? Was he was he more laid back than he than his like his sideline performances let on? Nah, he's nah. The managers, Craig was. Um, Barry, we have to say as well. When you're sitting talking about earlier, hard. He's the hardest guy I ever met in my life. With him. he he is a. I can remember going right. to watch him against Wraith, and I can remember Graham Hogg hitting him an absolute belt. But he never right. moved. He hit him once and knocked him clean out. The got sent off. I saw YouTube no, he was, him with that, didn't we? Uh, was he was a machine. Him. He was a machine. He was hitting a speedball like very, very, <laughs> very, very scary individual. By the way, you wouldn't know what he got. I've watched. I've watched him have a few barnies with a few of the boys as well. And, and by the way, all the boys something to try to drag him back. He was. He's crazy. By the way, he's. But no, he's he's so different away from football. He, he is. He's a genuinely lovely guy who has got a really um, dry. Good sense of humour as well, Aye. but now when he's in it, when he's in the football, nah, he's kind of mundane and nah, he wasn't he, nah, he was a right serious kind of, but he's different away from football. Um, he's, what, actually, he's actually a nice guy. He doesn't know anything about football because we do a quiz at the end of our show and he's at the bottom of the fucking list. <laughs> I absolutely go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro. So did you ever get? Did you ever get abuse for fans when you played? Did the fans oh, ever? I me. Fuck, I got abuse every week, man. How, how I can you, remember, did you ever take it the wrong way or whatever? Oh, no, I, I loved all that. Yeah, I, loved it. I used to be the part of it. Oh, no, I wanted it to be about me. Yeah. Uh, that thing with my ego as well. I can remember we were playing. I had never I'd never played with Hearts. This was like back in the day when I was at... Um, where was I? I was at Motherwell when we were going. It was the first time I'd played it. The first time I'd ever, first time I'd ever been at Easter Road playing it as well. And everybody in everyone in Edinburgh knew as soon as I started playing with St. John's and I was in a date, I was telling them how much I was a jambo. And I can remember we went to play Easter Road and um, Scott Leach was playing with Mother at the time as well. And Scott Leach had played with Hearts for years and years. And I thought we went out, he's like, Oh, wait, you hear the abuse I get here and all this. And I said, By the way, I'll get more abuse than you'll ever get. He's like, No, 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 listen to me. And goes out there to warm up, we're running over the pitch and they start singing, You hearts bastard. You and Leachy, Leachy's sitting to me, I told you, I told you, I said, That's actually shouting to me. And so Leach is like pointing, and he's actually talking about me, or are you talking about me? Kevin Twaddle, you're a wanker. <laughs> I was hated it. I was, you I was, it? Uh, I was hated all the heavies, but it's, it's bizarre because, I mean, I've spent a few, Ken, I've spent, I've spent a lot of time with a few players away from football and that level, and I've spent a lot of time watching Hibs as well, and I people are, I people can they forget, and uh, football's great at the time. It's, nah, I, I love taking abuse. I loved it. I used to, even just when they were shouting, you knew that when you were doing really well, people were always going to give you abuse. If you want to get your name shouted, then you probably were on the den as well as what you should have been. Um, I definitely know. But we're getting back to um, what we were talking about previously um, with regards to your book that you had brought out. Now, a lot of people see you as a as a um, inspiration writer. Uh, and a lot of people have gone through gambling issues within Scottish football. Like, for example, Brian Rice went through a wee bit of trouble at, at, at a point in time. Have you ever have you ever taken it upon yourself? I, and I remember you talking about uh, sponsorship and stuff like that, and obviously that goes through like a, a Narcotics Anonymous and, and Gamblers Anonymous as well. Have you ever taken it upon yourself to kind of like approach any of these people and kind of give them that crutch that maybe they need? 
with regards to with regards to the um, the gambling or, or anything at all like that. Well, well, Sue Sue obviously gone through this program as well. Part of your step twelve has gone and helping other people as well. So I have two sponsors now that. Oh, that's once you start to through the program. He's just spent the last nine months going through the program, changed his life about. He's, he's a walking miracle, man. Um, but I, I mean, I did that. I did that with the football as well. And by the way, I wouldn't go as far as saying I'm, I'm the inspiration. Like I'm just, I put my story out there. I just wanted people to know, you know what, there is help out there. And but that's inspiring me. Exactly. That's you know, you're 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 hiding your light under a bushel there, mate. To be Aye. honest with you, because there's there is. There's so, there's so many people that feel as if that they're no, that they've got nobody to turn to. And when they see stories like yours coming out, you know, and they're in the position where they can get in contact with you, you know, like maybe like an ex-footballer or a manager or something like that, all it takes is for them to see that and then go, right, well, if he can do it, then I can do it. You know, I know so... But you know what? I feel, I feel for... I feel for people in life. I'm I'm only an inspiration because I played football. I didn't want to be an inspiration because mm. I played football. I've I've got I'm at the only reason my story's out there and the only reason it's became huge to everybody is because I played football. I but you're using people, you're using it people. for the right you're using it for the right purposes, I, Kev. I suppose I suppose I'm, but you know what? I, I, I think I'm far from an inspiration. I just think listen, I take I take inspiration to people that have learned me how to run and get fit again and be fit and healthy and be a good person. I but I tell you what, they won't see themselves as inspirations either. So yeah. you, you know you need to you need to take the credit where it's due, and I think that you know that that should be part of your twelve steps, mate. Take the take the credit where it's due when you've done something right. You know, take the take uh, the plaudits. No, I, can't, I get I get. Listen, I get that. If I, if I ever do well and I'm deserving it, I get it from my sponsor. But it, it doesn't come over very. Uh, it doesn't come over very like no. We did we didn't you didn't do it for. I, I know back in the day I would have done all these things for the wrong reasons, but I didn't do it today for it to be an inspiration or for it to be a great person or I just want to help people. I just, mm. you know what, there's nothing better in life than being able to say to somebody, listen, if you're struggling today, you know what, I'm here, you want to come for a wee cup of tea or I just, and, but but I, I didn't think, I didn't think that's inspirational. I think the people who are inspirational are people who sit and say, you know what, I need a wee bit of help today. I need, I'm really struggling in life. I didn't know where to turn. I didn't care where yeah, well, to that, that was you though. Aye, that was me back in the day, but aye, listen, aye, if listen, people, <laughs> I'm people sure trying to ram me, this thing your throat, you're an inspiration, right? Uh, Shut up. <laughs> I just, you know what, I would just, I would just rather be seen the day as being, you know what, a nice guy, and and if I can help anybody, I'll help absolutely anybody at the end of the day. I mean, I've went through a life, uh, ripped the piss out of everybody, so it's <laughs> nice the day to be, uh, it's nice to be the day just to be me because of you live with this persona, as I say, the day in a book or playing a football player or. I'm just me at the end of the day. I want to be the most thing that's important to me as I want to be the most amazing dad in the world, and that's all that's important to me. I think that's, 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 that's a lot ended to that too, isn't it? Well, like, I was going, just going to ask you one more thing before we before we end. You, you mentioned previously that you, you had lost your relationship with your parents and stuff like that. Is everything back on track now? Are you, is everything sorted? Yeah, I mean, I pretty much got that back right away, to be honest with you. My family are everything, man. See, my, my wife, my wee girl, my mum and dad, my, my sister, my niece. Aye, I just... I'm the luckiest guy in the world. What I've got today, I mean, you couldn't pay for it. It's just I feel feel so much gratitude for, and I'm glad I'm in a headspace and in a place where I can be peaceful and serene, and I can see all the things that are. Because I'm not young anymore. I'm 49, and still got a wee bit in me. But I've I... so every week on Fit Daft, we put our Scottish football knowledge to the test. Our guests football knowledge to the test, right? So David Martindale, here's a couple of scores, right? He got 16. In joint second, it's John Sutton and Chick Young with 15. Mark Wilson and Keith Lasley are in third with 14. And then we've got Jamie Langfield on 12, Matt Reynolds on 10, Negri's on 5, Barry for EastEnders is in 4. And at the bottom, it's a tie between Peter Lovencrans, Derek Johnson, Levine and Mixu Patalainen. Is it MD do you think you would like to beat, Kevin? I've got to be honest with you. I'm 49 and I would I would say before we even start the quiz, a wee bit dementia so I- <laughs> fucking hang me done a wee bit so to be fair the, the questions if any they were numbers in gambling 20 to 20 but right. <laughs> general knowledge of football no great but on we'll, go let's go for it we'll get a bash so there's 90 seconds on the clock you can't pass right so you oh. must give an answer you can't pass so even if the answer yeah, you, you whatever pops in your head just give an answer go right are you want to do the questions too I'll do the questions this right. week then right. Right, right John do we have 90 seconds on the clock sir we do Kevin Twaddle, your time starts now. Who just won the April Player of the Month? Ryan Kent. Name one Scottish team with Athletic in their name. Forfa. 
Motherwell's Devante Cole is the son of which English striker? Andy Cole. How much did Wraith sign you for? Hundred and he just told me a hundred and twenty-five thousand. Which club did Hib sign Kevin Nisbet from? Wraith. Who finished second bottom of the championship? Morton. Which English team did Albion and Ajeti uh, join Celtic from? Chef United. Who did Wraith face next in the championship playoffs? Sunday. Which club did you only make one appearance for? St Martin. In what year did Stevie Clark become Scotland manager? 2019. Which Norwich player will miss out in the Euros due to injury? Um, for Scotland. Oh, don't know, Charlie McGrew. No, anyway, who who scored the second goal for St Johnson in their cup semi final? Oh, the boy scored the free kick. Kevin Twaddle, wrong. In what year did you join Motherwell? 1989. Name any Scottish club Paul Hartley has managed. He's Cove Rangers. Which European country does Ryan Gold play his football in? Time. Portugal. Portugal. I got that too bad, mate. Well. No bad, no that bad. Not bad, mate. A de- decent effort. Craig Levine must be thick as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after after what you've told us, I wouldn't be seeing that T's face. <laughs> no, I wouldn't tell him his face, but we'll cut that bit. <laughs> right, I'll go through the raw answers we Kev. Um, <clears throat> Kel Lafferty won April's Player of the Month. Um, Wraith apparently signed you for eighty thousand um, pounds. It was Martin that signed you for one hundred and fifty. Yeah, oh, so uh, it was that Martin, was sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, I love uh, that. I Kevin Nisbet signed uh, to Hibs from Dunfermline because he went right to Dunfermline oh, and Dunfermline to Hibs. Oh, yeah. uh, West Ham, that's where Celtic got Ayeti from. Um, only one appearance from for Air on loan, is that right? Oh, yeah. Aye, on loan, aye. aye. Yeah, there you go. Uh, it was Kenny McQueen that is going to miss out in the Euros because of injury. Um, it was Glenn Middleton that scored since Johnson's second goal in the Cup semi-final at the weekend. But aside from that, sir, you got everything right. So you are on eight points. No too bad, mate. That's decent. Brilliant. I'm, I'm, I'm happy, happy with that. Thank you. Eight, so you're there. Well, you've done better than Barry Fee Stendles and Marco Negri. So there we go, mate. Brilliant. Happy I wish I'd done better than Marco Negri in the in the bedroom department. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right, Kevin. Same thanks very much, mate. Cheers for your time. I hope you've enjoyed yourself, mate. Kevin, you've been an inspiration. Bro, you've been an inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be sending me messages on that now, that inspiration is that. Before I know it, I'll be running about thinking I'm big Kevin Twaddle again. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, this has been Football Daft Talk. Get your off your phone. Sorry, it's checking the Celtic score. It's checking the Celtic score. What is the Celtic score? Nine each. Is it? Aye. Are you trusting John? Is it? Is it? it is, I've just checked. Yeah, okay. We're obviously yes. recording this on a Wednesday night, so we have been distracted throughout the episode of checking the scores. Anyway. We have not got a score to check. I'm just going to puff it this. You enjoyed yourself, though. I have, mate. Do you know what? It's, it's been refreshing. I really... Enjoyed talking to Kevin Twaddle. I really did. I thought he was a, a great guest. I thought it's opened up my eyes to a lot of things that I'm, I was pretty close-minded towards, to yeah. be honest with you, before. Well, his book is on Amazon. Um, you can get it on there. And as I say, there's plenty of reviews on it. It looks as if it does. It's a, it's a good read. So I maybe can I put that in my next list. I've got all these books behind me, but I need to there you are. them. See if you've got a Kindle. It's only two ninety nine. There you have it. There you have it. John, say fair on that. final words. John, how have how you been? I've enjoyed today's show, boys. Well, obviously, think Stephen will turn up next week. I think he's off, man. I don't know. I am not going to be here next week, so I'm sure folks will be bet, delighted. Bet folk will be delighted about that. Oh, this, this got be a, it's got to be a complete brain session at all for three years next week, isn't it? <laughs> ah, listen. You and your wee oh, body. You weren't hearing what he was saying about you last week in this fucking podcast. <laughs> you're, a fucking, you're, a fucking sweet, you're a sweetie <laughs> wife, mate. You've been... <laughs> Fucking ripping into him when he's not here and you're going to be ripping into me when I'm not there. I'm the worst. You're missing out on a good one next week because we've got our guest booked already and he could be going to the Euros. Kevin Nisbet's going to be on the show next week. I'll tell you something. I just signed him on Football Manager. 
There you go. And that boy knows where the fucking goal is. I'll tell you that for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that'll do so this week's episode. Thanks for listening, watching, whatever you do. Like, subscribe, refresh, retweet the full lot. We'll <laughs> see you next week. We've been Gradle Tone, Bob, John. See you next week. Thanks, Gradle Tone, Bob, John. <laughs>